Hello everybody, in today's video we will be doing the chapter 16, Audit and Financial Control. Okay, first of all, just make sure that this is not chapter 23, this is chapter 16, that's just an error on the file name. Okay, so before you watch this video, I would request you all to watch the videos of the previous chapters as well, so that you'll be able to understand this chapter better. In case you haven't watched them yet, the link of the playlist is given in the description box below. Also, after you're done with the chapters, if you would like to solve the exam kit with me, and if you need the solutions of the exam kit, there is a playlist for that as well in the description box below. Make sure that you check them out. Okay, so in this chapter, we'll be learning about how the audit works and what are the ways in which financial control takes place in an organization. So what is the meaning of internal control and internal check? So what is internal control? Internal control is the process designed and affected by management to provide reasonable assurance about the achievement of entity's objectives with regard to reliability of financial reporting, effectiveness and efficiency of operations, compliance with applicable laws and regulation. So this is what internal um, control means. It basically is a process which is designed to like kind of look about the reliability of the financial reporting, effectiveness and efficiency of operations and compliance with the applicable laws. For example, now before we see the example of internal control, let's first see what this internal check actually mean. So there's a thing in an organization that one person cannot be doing the entire job. Every job must be done by two people at least. So we have seen this in the fraud chapter, right? In the next chapter, fraud, fraudulent activities, the video of it is already uploaded. So we had seen in that if only one person is supposed to do the entire duty, then the chances of fraud are more. So internal check means we need to ensure that one person is not doing the entire job at least two people are doing some job which by doing which fraud can be avoided so internal check is an element of internal control concerned with ensuring that no single task is executed from start to finish by only one person each individual's work is subject to an independent check by another person in the course of that other person's duty what is an example of internal control? For example, an accounts department might have a policy to check the additions and multiplication on the purchase invoice received before it is approved by payment. This control would help to ensure that the correct amounts are paid to the organization's suppliers and would therefore improve the reliability. So you got that? So again, let's see what does internal control mean? Internal control is the process designed and affected by management to provide reasonable assurance about the achieve, uh, organization's reports and documents. So we already saw what internal check is, which means that one person cannot be doing the entire job from the starting to end. There will be another person always who will be checking their work. The purpose of internal checking is to reduce the likelihood of errors and fraud. Errors should be reduced since an employee will take more care over their work if they know that it is going to be looked at by someone else. And any errors which are made should be spotted by the second person. So clearly it is possible that two or more employees could collude together to defraud their company. So it is risky to rely on a single internal control at any stage of operations. Consider a company that sells bottled drink to the supermarkets and other retailers. The company maintains its inventories in a central warehouse. Internal controls would be established by the management to ensure that the security of inventory so that they are not stolen by employees or third parties and to ensure the accuracy of accounting figures for inventories included in the financial statements. What are the typical controls which would be followed by such an organization? The first thing would be physical controls. So what comes under physical controls? Keeping the front door locked when not in use. 
banning visitors from entering the warehouse storage area so by doing this we will be preventing theft regular inventory counts so inventory can be counted every six months to check the accuracy of continuous inventory records so this will also prevent theft an internal check on inventory quantities could be implemented at each inventory count by ensuring that no individual counts the items that they are responsible for maintaining so a theft would require collision which will be undetected a company's internal controls can be well designed so well designed that they eliminate the risk of failing to achieve the company's objective so this is false c eliminate the risk the risk cannot be 100% eliminate however we can reduce the risk but we can never say that by following these procedures 100% of the risk will be eliminated the purpose of internal control the purpose of internal control is implied by the definition given earlier to help the management achieve the entity's objectives the orderly and efficient conduct of business safeguarding of assets prevention and detection of fraud and error accuracy and completeness of the accounting records timely preparation of reliable financial information now why do companies need internal controls what is the purpose and what are the reasons why do the companies require internal controls in the first place internal controls are there to prevent risks occurring or to minimize the impact of risks even when controls are in place documents may still get lost or portable assets may go missing the level and extent of internal controls required depend on what the risks are if such controls fail if it is particularly important that stringent controls exist where there are associated legal requirements okay now let's read about what internal controls are so this is something which is very self explanatory i'm giving you a minute just read this and try to understand it yourself and then we'll move further okay now you have the next part the components of internal control so what are the components of internal control the first thing is the control environment so the environment in which we are in that is the control environment so that is the first component of internal control moving on we have the entity's risk assessment process information system relevant to financial reporting control activities and monitoring control so the components of internal control are the control environment the entity's risk assessment process information system relevant to financial reporting control activities and monitoring of controls the term internal just a second the term internal control can refer to any of these components so to begin with let's see the first uh, component of the control internal control which is the control environment so the control environment is the overall attitude of management regarding the internal controls and their importance it encompasses management's philosophy commitment to integrity and ethical values a formal organization structure and proper training of staff so the control environment is what sets the tone of the organization in terms of the control consciousness of its employees it is the foundation of effective internal control so this is the overall attitude of the management so the control environment basically speaks about the attitude of the management what is the second component of internal control the second component of internal control is the risk assessment process 
So the risk assessment process is an entity's process for identifying and responding to the business risks. Business risk. So business risk is the possibility that an event or transaction could occur that will adversely affect the organization's ability to achieve its objectives and execute its strategies. It is conventionally split between internal and external factors. So business risks can be internally also and they can be externally as well. So let's see what are the internal so business risk. Product development, sales, procurement, production, product delivery, after sales services. These are the internal business activities and there might be risks in these. And in external elements, political factors, social economic trends, technological factors, laws and regulations. These are something which are more or less related to the external elements. So once the risk has been identified, management must investigate their significant and the likelihood of their occurrence and how they should be managed. So the first one, first component of internal control was the control environment and the second component of internal control was the risk assessment process. The third is the information system. So the information system relevant to financial reporting objectives consists of the procedures and records established to process the transactions that the entity carries out and to maintain accountability of the related assets, liabilities and equity balances. Many information systems make extensive use of the information technology. So first let's try to understand what the information system basically means. So the information system is where all the information is being recorded and that means the information system must be able to identify and record all valid transactions, describe the transactions in sufficient detail to permit proper, proper classification for financial reporting, measure the transactions to permit the recording of their proper monetary value, determine the current account, correct accounting period, present properly the transactions and related disclosures in the financial statements. So all that is related to the information system which means that all the information must be provided in a proper manner. So moving on we have the next component of internal control and that is the control activity. So what is the control activity? Control activities are the policies and procedures that help ensure that management directives are carried out. For example, that necessary actions are taken to address risks that threaten the achievement of the entity's objectives. Control activities, whether within IT or manual systems, have various objectives and are applied at various organizational and functional levels. So control activities are basically the management's directives which are carried out and what are the policies and procedures that have been taken. Different books identify different categories of control activities. Okay, but here we are going to see what are the control activities. So to remember what the control activities are in an internal control, remember the abbreviation ACCA maps. So now let's see what are the control activities. A for authorization, C for comparison, C for computer controls, A for arithmetic controls, M for maintaining a trial balance and control accounts, A for accounting reconciliation, P for physical controls and S for segregation of duties. So these are the following control activities which needs to be followed by an organization. So now let's go into the detail of the control activities. So the first one is authorization. So authorization involves members of the staff having to obtain approval from managers. So before you kind of take a big decision, you need authorization of the seniors. That is what is known as authorization. And the next C is comparison. So what is comparison? Comparison means looking at the analysis and reports in order to identify management or control issues from the past performance. 
so this is something which you compare and then uh, kind of analyze your progress or where you are right now the next one we have is computer controls the computer controls might be of two separate types the first computer control is more over you know general in nature the second is application control so these will be examined in more detail later both are designed to ensure that computer systems operate as intended now you have another a that is for arithmetical controls so what are the arithmetical controls just a second yeah um where is it yeah so then we have arithmetical controls so what is the arithmetical controls arithmetical controls check for minor errors or frauds that would not have otherwise been detected figures can be recalculated to check if they are correct and then you have another m which is maintaining a trial balance and control accounts this will often enable the organization to see easily if any errors or frauds have occurred so if any errors and frauds have occurred then you can see the control accounts and trial balance and kind of get to know about that and then we have accounts reconciliation so reconciliation must be done on a regular basis which means if any errors are there we correct it there and then then you have physical controls so physical controls are something which are often overlooked but they are just as important as administrative or accounting procedures there is no point in having an efficient inventory tracking system if there is inadequate security so physical controls is something which is like really really essential in order to kind of protect ourselves from theft and various types of frauds when you have segregation of duties you know that duty must be segregated and we spoke about the internal check wherein somebody must always check your segregated job so these are the control activities which is known as acc by the abbreviation accm maps authorization comparison computer controls arithmetical controls maintaining a trial balance and control accounts accounting reconciliation physical controls and segregation of duties okay so the this is one illustration about uh, examples of specific control you can kind of you know pause the video and read it by yourself this is very self explanatory moving on after the control activities we have the next step of internal control and that is the monitoring of controls it is a process to assess the quality of internal control performance over time it involves assessing the design and operation of controls on a timely basis and taking necessary corrective actions so management must decide whether existing controlling procedures are okay or they could change over time for example a system might become too overwhelmed if the entity grows too rapidly the operation of controls must also be checked compliance failures may arise because the lack of staff motivation or through poor training in practice the choice of controls may reflect a comparison of the cost of operating individual controls against the benefits expected to be derived from them many of the internal control which would be relevant to larger enterprises are not practical appropriate or even necessary in smaller enterprises management of small enterprises have less need to depend on formal internal controls for the reliability of the records and other informations because of their personal contact with or involvement in the operation of the enterprise itself in many larger companies internal audit will contribute to the monitoring of control activities however the extent of internal audits involvement is up to management to decide so once again if you see the components of internal control the first thing is the control environment 
then you have the risk assessment process then you have the information system which is relevant then you have the control activity and then you have the monitoring of controls okay moving on now we go to the alternative analysis of internal controls what is the alternative analysis of internal controls there are three types of internal controls that can be considered the first one is preventive controls so these are the controls like segregation of duties recruiting and training the right staff having an effective control culture so this is something which will prevent any sort of fraud to occur from the beginning itself then we have detective controls which is um, reconciliation supervision and internal checks so if something has already occurred it will make it easy for us to detect it then we have corrective controls corrective controls means that something has already occurred so now we are checking up on the control internal control systems and procedures and kind of correcting them so that this does not occur in the future out of the three ways we have seen the best way is always the preventive why because prevention is always better than the cure test your understanding too you can do it by yourself okay now we have the information technology and internal control the use of information technology in internal control so nowadays it is used in almost every single thing so we are going to see about how the it sector helps in the internal control so the first thing is financial controls this involves it being used as a check for the financial data and the organization this could include ensuring the security of financial data such as through the use of password and authorization this could allow organization to make sure that the financial procedures are followed so many businesses also have like you know various sorts of it systems like sales ledger facilities the system could be set to prevent the staff from making sales to sales to customers who have already reached the credit limit so for all that staff it is helpful that is the first thing now the second thing is operational controls so what is operational controls operational activities are the activities which are done on a day to day basis so it wherever it is used as a control on the day to day activities of a business that is where it is known as the operation system so let us revise again it controls are used in financial controls as well as operational controls now now we have the protection the protection of the it systems and software within the business while it has a role to play in the creation and implementation of internal controls controls must also be put in place to ensure that an organization's it systems are operating correctly so what are the controls which we have to put in the it system of the internal control in any organization so generally the controls we have they include the physical controls you know the physical controls like having the doors locked or security and safeguards and like something which protects you from the thunderstorm and etc and then we have hardware and software configurations so these controls are designed to ensure that new it is tested and installed correctly into your system to minimize the risk of errors to the um system so in in order to minimize the errors and everything hardware and software configuration is being done then we have the logical access so what is the logical access logical access has something to do with these controls are designed to prevent unauthorized access to organizations information systems so logical access means that you won't be able to have access to the system until and unless um, you have the passcode and everything these could include password system and then we have disaster recovery so like having offsite backup and various other measures in case a disaster or something like that occurs you can still kind of you know get your data back then we have output controls these ensure that the outputs from the system are both complete and secure 
these could this could include controls over who outputs are distributed within the organizations and then last we have the technical support so it is important that all the users of the organizations it systems are competent training policies and technical support could be a valuable control so the protection of the it system so we had we studied about the physical controls hardware and software configuration logical access disaster recovery output controls and technical support now we come to the application controls so these are the controls which are fully automated and tend to be designed to ensure that the data input into the system is complete and accurate these controls will vary from system to system but these uh, application controls their primary motive is to have completeness authorization identification validity and forensic checks imagine an employee in a bank entering a new okay this let's just read this the system may automatically refuse the process if one piece of information is missing this ensures completeness the system may also sense check the information to ensure that it is valid the customer's postcode or telephone number if it's not in the correct format then it gets denied or rejected management responsibility it is the directors and the senior management's responsibility to establish proper internal control arrangements within their company this responsibility may derive from statutory requirements for the general corporate governance requirements so who is responsible for a proper internal con- controlment it is the directors and the senior management's responsibility company law varies from country to country but typically the directors of a company are required by law to keep proper accounting records to safeguard the assets of the company okay the turnbull report was issued in 1999 to give guidance to directors on how to comply with these sections of the UK corporate governance code this report emphasizes that the board of directors is responsible for the company system of internal control furthermore it is the role of management to implement board policies on risk and control all employees have some responsibility for internal control as part of their accountability for achieving their object in its annual assessment of internal control the board should consider the changes in the nature and extent of significant risk since the last annual assessment the scope of management's ongoing monitoring of risk including the report management have made to the board incidents of any significant control failings so internal financial control is a part of overall internal control although the auditors will be particularly interested in testing and reporting on the financial controls the board is responsible for all the controls in the company be it financial operational or compliance control so all that is just responsible uh, by the directors are responsible what is the meaning of internal auditing and external auditing so internal auditing so internal auditing is an independent activity this is established by management to examine and evaluate the organization's risk management process and system of control and to make recommendations for the achievement of company's objectives what is external auditing external auditing is the independent examination of the evidence from which the financial statements are derived in order to give the reader as to the truth and fairness in the state of affairs which they disclose so internal auditing is an appraisal activity established within an entity as a service to the entity its functions include examining evaluating and monitoring the adequacy and effectiveness of internal control so and whereas an external audit is a periodic examination of the books to make sure that it is true and fair 
Internal auditing is established by the management of a company to help them manage the company by reporting to management on company's risks and systems of control. External auditing is required by law in large companies and public companies. Independent auditors inspect the accounting records and systems. Okay. Now let's come here and let us discuss what is the difference between the internal audit and external audit. So first let's talk about the role internal auditing. Internal auditing's role is to advise the management on whether the organization has sound systems of internal control to protect against the organization against the loss. An external audit is to provide opinion to the shareholders whether the financial statements give a true and fair view. Legal basis. Internal auditing is not a um, legally requirement. However, the UK Corporate Governance Court recommends that if a listed company do not, does not have an internal audit department, it should annually assess the need for one. So external auditing legal requirement for large companies, public companies and many public bodies. Scope of work. So in the internal audit determined by the management covers all areas of the organization, operational as well as the financial. Now when it comes to the external audit, it is determined by the auditor to carry out only mainly on the financial focus. Now we have the approach. So the internal audit they approach um, increasingly risk based they assess the risk evaluate the systems of control the test operations and make recommendations for improvements and approach that is related to the um, external audit increasingly risk based test underlying transactions and etc so operations will be tested by internal and underlying transactions will be tested by the external. Now let's come to responsibility. To advise and make recommendations on internal control and corporate governance. So they advise and make recommendations on about the internal control. And uh, as you know, the external audit has to tell whether it has a, give a true and fair view. Okay, external audit. Someone independent from outside the company being audited is brought in to examine the annual published financial statement. They, they will issue a report that explains the audit process, gives opinions to the truth and fairness of the accounts and whether they have been properly prepared. So many organizations, typically large companies, are like legally required to have an external audit. Only certain people are legally allowed to be external auditors. The external audit process is regulated by law and by audit standards to ensure consistent quality. Internal audit is um, management may wish to have other things checked. So having accounting systems check, internal control systems check, value of money audit and all that, that will be checked by the internal audit system. There is no legal requirement for it, but however, it was up to the management for desire. But now, it has become increasingly expected. In future, it might become a legal thing, but right now, it's still expected. A company may use internal employees to do these tasks or may hide outside specialists to provide these tasks. Now, we have the key differences. So what are the differences between the external auditors? So when we talk about independence, external auditors must be and be seen to be independent of their clients. So they have to be independent in order for us to trust their opinions. Internal audit opinions would also be of more benefit if they were totally independent. However, internal auditors are appointed by the directors to report to the directors. It is far harder to maintain the independence. Legal. External audits are legal, internal are not legal. Appointment and reporting. External auditors are appointed by the shareholders and also report to the shareholders. Internal auditors are appointed by the directors and report to the directors. External audits are controlled by law but mostly by audit standards. Guidance for internal con audit is limited to fundamental principles. Okay.
the internal audit is simply a necessary cost must be incurred and offers few tangible that's not true this is never the definition of internal audit why might a bank insist on external you can do that yourself what is the purpose of internal audit so even this you can do it by yourself just pause the video and read it down we have already discussed everything internal auditors work has been expanded in recent years and the role of internal audit often now includes helping to set corporate objectives helping to design and monitor performance measures for these objectives now when you come to corporate governance now we come to corporate governance a properly functioning internal audit department is a part of good corporate governance as recognized by all national and international corporate governance codes so internal audit enables management to perform proper risk assessment by means properly understanding the strengths and weaknesses of all parts of the control systems in the business so now when you think about what is the function of internal audit in the context of corporate risk management internal audit has a particular interest in evaluating the company's risk management structures internal audit can manage the basic data used by management to identify risk identify the techniques for prioritizing and managing risks report on the effectiveness of risk management solutions example internal controls now let's talk about the structure and operation of an internal audit function the uk corporate governance code on corporate governance states that uk companies without an internal audit function should annually review the need for one where there is an internal audit function the board should annually review its scope of work authority and resources ideally the internal audit function should be staffed with qualified experienced staff whose work is closely monitored by an audit committee so even though in the legislation it's not compulsory to like have an internal audit team but however the uk corporate governance code asks you to kind of you know check in review and see that you might need one what is the scope of internal audit internal audit staff are typically expected to carry out a variety of tasks reviewing internal controls and financial reports reviewing risk management systems carrying out special assize assessment assignments conducting operational reviews what is the limitation of internal audit so as everything in this chapter and in this book everything has advantages but at the same time they have various disadvantages as well so what are the disadvantages of internal audit internal auditors have an unavoidable independence problem they are employed by the management of the company and yet are expected to give an objective opinion on matters for which management are responsible internal audit will only succeed if it is properly staffed and resourced if internal auditors identify fraud they must be unwilling to disclose it because of the fear of the repercussions so obviously if somebody from the company is required to report to somebody from the company it's kind of weird right these limitations can be reduced if an audit committee sets the work agenda for internal audit receives internal audit reports is able to ensure the internal audit is properly resourced has a voice at the main board level now what is an external audit the purpose of an external audit as set out in the auditing practices board definition is for the external auditor to report his opinion on whether the financial systems give a true and fair view in accordance with an identified financial reporting framework an unqualified opinion makes the financial statements more reliable in the eyes of the readers of the statements so an external audit department mainly has to tell us if the uh, our financial statements give a true and fair view or not an external audit may also have secondary objectives the fact that employees of the company know that their work may be inspected by external auditors may encourage them to document their work properly and dissuade them from fraud 
The fact that the external auditors will inspect the company's accounting systems means that they may be able to suggest improvements to the system which could tighten the controls. So what are the advantages of external audit? Disputes between management may be more easily settled. For instance, a partnership which has complicated profit sharing arrangements may require an independent examination of those accounts to ensure as far as possible an accurate assessment and division of those profits. Major changes in ownership may be facilitated if past accounts contain an unqualified audit report. For instance, where two sole traders merge their business into a new partnership. Applications to third parties for finance may be enhanced by audit accounts. However, do not do remember that a bank, for instance, is likely to be far more concerned about the future of the business and available security than the past historical cost records audited or otherwise. The auditors likely in to involve an in-depth examination of business and so may enable the auditor to give more constructive advice to the management on improving the efficiency of the business. Now, if you come to the disadvantages of external audit, what are they? The audit fee. So, if you are taking the audit services, you obviously need to pay them some sort of commission or salary or the fee. Clearly, the services of an auditor must be paid for. It is the reason that few partnership and even few sole traders are likely to have their accounts audited the accounts accountant's role as the preparator of financial statements as a tax advisor and a general advisor becomes much more important to such concerns the audit involves the client staff and management in giving time providing information to the auditor professional auditors should therefore plan their audit carefully to minimize the disruption Okay, test your understanding 5. Internal audit may be carried out by employees of the company being audited or may be carried out by external accountants who are paid for delivering these services. So that's true. Internal audit is something you are doing by yourself but they, it's up to you. You want to keep your employees or you want to hire somebody from outside. In large company, to whom do internal auditors normally um, report their conclusions? So, if you're talking about a l large company, then internal auditors report to the non-executive director. Internal auditors. External auditors report to the shareholders. But when you're talking about the internal auditors, they report to the non-executive directors. Internal control and audit. We have now examined the internal controls within an organization as well as the role of the internal and external auditor. It is worth noting that these two topics are closely related and an organization's internal controls will be of a great interest. Why internal control interests the external auditor? So why does an external auditor care about the fact of like you know whether you have an internal control or not? How does this even concern the external auditor? The principal reason why internal control interests the external auditor is that the reliance on internal control will reduce the amount of substantive testing of transactions and result in balances in the ledger accounts required. Substantive tests are tests for accuracy and they are used to establish facts. At an early stage in their work, the auditors will have to decide the extent to which they believe they can place reliance on the internal controls. As the audit proceeds, the decision will be kept under review and depending on the results of their examination, they may decide to place more or less reliance on these controls. The operation of internal controls should ensure the completeness and accuracy of accounting records. If the auditors are satisfied that the internal control system is functioning properly, there is therefore a reduced risk of error in the accounting records. It is very important to the auditor to establish what internal control system exists and then to test that system to find out whether it is working properly. Another reason why the auditor needs to consider the adequacy of the accounting system 
is that the auditor typically has a statutory responsibility to form an opinion as to whether proper accounting records have been kept this implies the operation of a sound system of internal control by recording the accounting system and checking its operation by tests of control the auditor can reduce the amount of detailed substantive procedures the total amount of work is reduced as a result and a more efficient audit is achieved why internal control interests the internal auditor so that is something which is just related to the internal auditor so a key objective of the internal auditor is to review the organization system of internal control and to provide assurance that the corporate governance requirements are being met therefore internal controls are fundamental to the work of the internal auditor like external auditors internal auditors have make decisions on the extent of reliance on controls to manage risks okay now when you talk about the internal control and the internal auditor an objective and adequately resourced internal audit function should be in position to provide the board with much of the assurance so to provide the assurance internal auditor needs to check that the controls are in place and are adequate to guard against the risks and that the controls are operating effectively would an external auditor prefer to carry out an audit using exclusively substantive texting or would he prefer to rely on the internal controls of the business so they use the strategy whichever is right for the particular situation and we read that right now ensuring the effectiveness of internal financial procedures effectiveness is a measure of the extent to which organization's objectives are being effect, uh, ma- achieved management's objectives for internal financial procedures will be described as the orderly and efficient conduct of the business the safeguarding of assets prevention and detection of fraud and error accuracy and completeness in the accounting records the timely preparation of reliable financial information the best way for management to set about achieving these objectives will be to establish a strong set of internal financial controls to implement all the five components of internal control in the financial reporting function internal auditors can be used to recommend improvements in the internal financial control so the internal auditors they have the right to suggest if any improvements are required in the internal financial control as an incident by product of their work external auditors may also recommend improvements in control by implementing a high quality corporate governance regime and a strong internal control system management can be confident that the financial objectives will be met so what is the board the board balance of executive and non executive directors they are supplied with information to enable it to carry out its duties overall responsibility for the internal control system is with the board of directors what about the employees proper training awareness of the need for ethical behavior now let's come to internal audit operational internal audit assignments will investigate standards of the internal control external audit will report weakness in internal control discovered during their course of their audit work so that was something about corporate governance now we come to internal control good control environment you need a good control environment you need regular risk assessment process good information system and communication of system appropriate control activities and obviously monitoring of controls the reporting of internal control weakness to management is the primary objective of the external audit that's not true why the primary objective of the external audit what we have already seen is that it is to report to the shareholders whether the statements are true and fair so the primary objective the first and foremost objective of external auditing is to report to the shareholders whether the financial statements are true and fair or 
not so this is not this is even that this is still a uh, like objective but it's not the primary objective an internal audit function is legally is legally is usually legally required in none of the above see internal obje- internal audit is not legally required and you know like you need to review what we saw in the uk corporate governance code that if you don't have an internal audit system you must review the need for one but however it is not legal for you to have an internal internal audit system but external is legal in large companies but internal audit is not legal anywhere external audit reports are addressed to which of the following groups okay the external auditor so whom does the external auditor report to external auditor audit report is addressed to the share holders so whenever there is an external audit that whether the statements are true or fair that is given to the shareholders the primary purpose of an internal audit is to everyone knows what the answer of internal audit is it is to review risk management and then internal controls all of an organization's internal controls would be of interest to the external auditor that's not true why so the external auditor is only um caring about the exact stuff which might you know kind of determine whether uh if something would be related to the true and fair view of the financial statement that is what the share external auditor is concerned about and not everything which of the following groups is responsible for the creation and operation of satisfactory operating controls within the organization so that is something which is like related to the board of directors so the internal control and everything end of the day the board of directors are only responsible for that which of the following is not one of the components of internal control the entity's risk assessment documentation of control procedures monitor okay obviously what is not the answer the documentation there's nothing like that right which category of controls would proper segregation of duties be classified as proper um segregation of duties would be something which would be based on the preventive controls contrasting the actual performance of a business with the budgeted performance is what so that is something which is related to the something which is related to comparison would you agree identify the description above which is associated with these okay staff have to gain approval from management for various transactions so that is authorization right St- um this control activity can be subdivided into general and application controls general and application controls so now that is something which is related to uh, what do you say the computer controls right general and application controls are in the computer controls security staff are hired to reduce the risk of inventory theft now that is a physical control the bank balance is periodically agreed to the balance shown on the financial statements so this is accounting reconciliation okay write down the three of the above which relate to the external audit so three of these statements are related to external audit the scope of the work is determined by management work performed involves testing and underlying transactions legally required by uh, many public we talking about external right legally required for public companies and large bodies responsible for making recommendations on produces an opinion whether the the uk corporate recommends that is not undertaken then it needs to be assessed okay so now responsible for making recommendations on internal control and corporate governance 
work performed in world testing and the underlying okay so now let's see if our answer is right or wrong it is correct so these are the statements which relate to the external audit but when you think about the first one it's determined by management that is something internal audit and responsible for making recommendations on internal control and corporate governance i mean that is related to internal again if not undertaken you need to even that is internal so the answer is this so that's it we're done with this chapter i know this was very lengthy but it's easy to understand try reading this chapter on your own and try to kind of solve the exam kit as well and i'll be making a video and i've linked it in i've linked the playlist of the kaplan exam kit solutions in the description box below after doing the chapters make sure that you do the exam kit as well thank you